Hello, this is Dr. Stina McCullough. Welcome to Hands Off My Food. Today we are discussing optimal gut health, why probiotics are not enough. We're joined today by Abby Smith. Abby Smith is the Network Coordinator for Savory Global, which is an organization that is leading the way in regenerative agriculture. She and her husband own the Jefferson Center for Holistic Management, which is an organic cattle ranch and savory network hub in California. Welcome to the program, Abby. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. Oh, well, we are so privileged to have you here. So I brought you on today to talk about how probiotics are no longer enough. What I find fascinating is that many of us, including myself, have bought into the idea that probiotics can heal our guts and therefore they can improve our overall health and, and reverse illnesses. Now, while there is a place and time for probiotics, what I have discovered is that it is not enough. It is not a sustainable system. We're now learning that optimal health requires diversity of microbes in our gut. It's not just the quantity of good microbes that determines our health, it's also the presence of many different strains or types of bacteria and fungi and viruses. And probiotics just don't offer that diversity. Instead, with probiotics, we're ingesting just a handful of strains of microbes. In essence, we are creating a monoculture, which, as you know, is the same thing that our modern food system is doing. Our modern industrial food system is making us sick largely by creating a monoculture. In fact, research is now showing that in our Western culture, it's estimated that we have lost roughly 30% of the diversity of our gut microbes. I mean, 30%. I mean, one major reason that this is happening is because of the current industrial food system. So Abby, explain to us, what is the industrial food system? Can you paint a picture of what that system looks like? Yep, I, I have one simple word, a factory. Just picture a factory. So uh, we have machines, we have loud noises, we have um, sterile environments, um, just, it, any type of factory you can think of, if you've ever been in one, that's what we've applied to our landscape. And that, that's really what we're producing. So it's about inputs, it's about outputs, it's about efficiency. Um, it's not about biodiversity, it's not about life um, and managing complexities or anything like that. It's about efficiency and making something happen. So just think of a factory when you think of the industrial food system. And that's what we're creating. Okay. And so... As our viewers know, nearly every bite of food that we eat in America comes from these factories, right? Right. right. And these factories, when we say that they're a monoculture, what does that actually mean? What are we referring to? It means that you're producing one thing. So we do not have, like you were saying in the gut microbiome, that you have um, uh, fungus and viruses even and bacteria and all these different these different organisms working together, or these different parts or systems working together to create um, something that's greater than, than um, each part, right? But in a monoculture, you, it's all about one thing. And I've been um, thinking about this with cattle because it, like you mentioned in my bio, my husband and I are, um, we, we operate a cattle ranch. And um, if you look at any commercial, I, and I know that a lot of people don't do this, but there's a lot of, um, if you look at any field that you drive past, if you drive past a dairy, you're going to see black and white cows typically because all most, most dairies are Holsteins. And if you drive by a ranch, especially in the, in the West Coast, you'll see a lot of black cattle because most cattle are Angus. And we've made, um, we've made it all about one. And why would one species be the best thing for our, diver our diverse country or our diverse world? Like how could, how could just one species be the, that? And, and that's the idea is that um, industrial agriculture is all about just one, one species of cattle, one type of lettuce. It's all about just one, and that's just not stable. Okay, and so that's why, like, if we drive down sometimes the freeways or the highways, we will often see rows and rows of corn or rows and rows of soybean or rows of wheat, right? Yeah. That's part of this monoculture industrial system that the farmers are paid um, through our tax dollars, through subsidies, to grow um, a handful of crops, 
right? And they grow large quantities of these crops. So one farmer could actually grow just um, a large crops of wheat, right? With no other plants interspersed within that garden. It's right. just wheat, right? And this creates a monoculture. So um, by, by that, and correct me if I'm wrong, what happens is that if you're growing just one type of plant or you're growing just one type of animal on your land, mm -hmm. you are decreasing the diversity of the microbes in that soil, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then when that happens, it, it bleeds over onto the plant. So then the plant has less diversity of microbes on the plant. The animal that eats the plant, whether it's the cow or the chicken or us, they now have less diversity of microbes in their system. And then at the, we're at the top of that food chain, right? So when we eat those animals and we eat those plants that have decreased microbial diversity, now we have decreased microbial diversity in our gut, correct? Correct, absolutely. Yeah, uh, you've nailed it. Yep. Okay, and what I love about um, the institute that you work for, about Savory Global, is that that is your goal. Your goal is to create a whole new food system for us that not only sustains the soil and the plants and the animals, but sustains us and actually um, feeds the diversity of our gut, right? Of our gut microbes to make the whole system healthier. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. So I guess, you, I mean, there's so much connection between like you're, you're making here between the soil and how the soil functions in our gut. And the truth is we know so little about it, it as a, as, um, as a, world as a species we don't know that much about how things and all the interrelatedness and so we're i think in industrial agriculture we're using really blunt tools really for and and using them just to um in ways and in systems that we don't know enough about okay so explain to me um regenerative agriculture because that is the food system that savory global and others are trying to create right is a regenerative system right so what does that system look like right so it so it's a um trying to use words that uh because i'm so deeply in this right yeah. <laughs> this is what we're doing every day so i'm like well it almost would be like what is breathing it's like well um so i regenerative agriculture just is really an emphasis on the soil so we're looking at um, how can we build in and work with natural systems and let let versus make right so in in industrial agriculture we're making nature do something right we're fighting every weed we're fighting every rodent or um, pest that comes along right we're fighting that we want this sterile environment where our one crop can grow perfectly of course that's in nature um, nature just doesn't work that way right mm -hmm. And so in regenerative agriculture, it's, it's a whole different like fundamental philosophy in that we're working with nature and we're letting that abundance of um, that is inherent in nature emerge effortlessly. So we're not forcing, right? So think let versus make is one key distinction. And the outcome of that is that you're going to have that biodiversity from the soil all the way up through the, um, through the whole system. And that, that is the whole emphasis of, of regenerative agriculture is building through production versus depleting through production. Okay, I love that. All right, so, the, so the emphasis is on regenerating the soil, regenerating the plant health, regenerating the animal health, and in essence, regenerating human health right. through regenerative agriculture. So I love this. This provides me with so much hope. Um, especially from the perspective of a mother who's had two sick children and I've been sick myself from the food supply, okay. from the industrial food supply. So when I learned about regenerative agriculture recently at a, at a conference you invited me um, to speak at, um, I was just filled with hope because yeah. I see this as a solution, a viable, um, easy solution for consumers to grab onto. It's a solution that can help us restore our health and the health of our families. So, um, because if you look at the industrial food system, there's no way around concluding that it's making us sick, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it is hands down, it's contributing to um, increases in the numbers, uh, number of chronic illnesses or inflammatory diseases we're seeing, all the way from allergies to heart disease to, to diabetes to autoimmune conditions. 
And what you're saying and what you're working towards is giving us, the consumer, a solution. It's a way around that sickness, mm -hmm. right? And it's mm -hmm. it starts with generating the soil, but it ends with regenerating ourselves. So I yeah. love the message that you can you can actually fix this for ourselves and for um, our families. Mm -hmm. So how is regenerative agriculture different than organic, right? Because right now um, mm -hmm. I've advised people and I do this myself to look for the USDA organic seal. Um, mm -hmm. It's an easy label that you can identify on the packages and we know there's loopholes in the system, but at least mm -hmm. that's better than conventional food, right? So how mm -hmm. is regenerative agriculture a step beyond organic? Yeah, absolutely. So I think I don't I think organic's great. Like you said, look for it. It's it means that they're that things are produced in a certain way and it's in its um and we buy organic, absolutely. Like that's I don't want to discredit what they're doing. Regenerative is taking that to the next level. So um I don't want to I, I don't know if I want to I don't want to confuse people <laughs> or too much, but this is really uncharted territory. Like I, I was saying before, we don't know as much about um, the soil and how it works and how our, how the, all the different um, species in our guts work, right? We're just learning. It's emerging. It's this new field. And there's these concepts like carbon farming and regenerative agriculture. Sometimes those are used interchangeably, but the whole idea is about um, bringing our world back into balance based on the way that we're living and we're consuming products. So regenerative is um, where organic is saying we're complying with these certain things. It's more of a checklist like, okay, there's no pesticides, there's no herbicides, um, you know, thing. I mean, it, our ranch is certified organic. So I know what we have to go through. It's a rigorous compliance based system for farmers and ranchers. And, um, and regenerative is more about, um, about the system as a whole and how do you um, like how do you draw down carbon out of the atmosphere how do you how do you actually regenerate soil and regenerate biodiversity through your production so it's looking at a bigger picture right it's not about a checklist it's about the whole system um, and it's it's emerging so we don't you know there's how do we how do we encourage farmers to um, to sequester carbon through production and grow soil through the production. It's, it's a completely, like all of that is forming, which makes it really, really exciting. Um, the, our team from Savory Institute was at Expo West, which is the largest natural foods like expo in the world. And it's always in Southern California each year. And regenerative was like the hottest topic in consumer trends. Like that was what, you know, and some people maybe didn't really know what they were talking about or what it really was, but it was, it is like the new, it's the new, it's like organic to the next level. So I think a way that I always think of it is if you go to, if you're driving in California, we have a lot of different um, specialty crops. We have strawberries, we have lettuce, we have artichokes, we have avocados, all these special things. Now I can drive by an organic lettuce farm in Salinas, in the Salinas Valley, and there will be so much bare soil, right? And that's what we don't want because bare soil is um, dead, is, is not full of life. We need to cover our soil. So there's nothing, so that farm, that lettuce farm can be like the best organic lettuce farm ever, but it is still depleting the, our natural system, our, our land base through its production. It's not building soil through its production, even though it's organic. Does that make sense? Yes, actually it does make a lot of sense. And covering the soil is one of the tenets, right, of regenerative agriculture, mm -hmm. as well as like no tilling, for example. Yeah. Um, tilling common practice in industrialized farming. And now we know that tilling um, actually hurts the microbes in the soil, right? Just tilling them up, exposing them to the air and to the sunlight, you're changing the makeup of the microbes in the soil just by tilling it, right? right? And in organic, you can till, right? Right. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. So there are some of these differences. They, they don't cover, they don't have to cover the soil. Um, they can till if, if they want. Um, and it's my understanding that organic primarily focuses on no chemicals added. So no pesticides, no herbicides, like you're not going to use GMOs. Right. Um, and so this is actually a step beyond, right. Which to me, um, equates to healthier soil, healthier food, healthier humans through regenerative right. culture. Yeah, yes. So I wanted to ask you, um, you're a mother. Um, mm -hmm. I had the privilege of meeting your daughter at the conference. Yes. And, um, what does what does regenerative agriculture mean to you as a mother? Like why, 
why is it important for you to promote regenerative agriculture um, from the from the standpoint of a mom? Yes, I think it's interesting that you you mentioned being a mom because I see in this movement women t- stepping up and taking this a big leadership role. In fact, last week there was a. Um, a conference in Boulder where Savory is headquartered and it was about women in regenerative. So it was all women leaders. And I don't, um, I work as the network coordinator. So I work with people in this movement literally across the globe. And um, I, I'm just, it's just an observation. It's not um, a feminist statement or anything like that, but we, there is a strong, women are really playing a big role in this movement. And I, I, I think it's just that um, I see them from India, from Argentina, from all over the world, just stepping up and doing what needs to be done for our children. And I think that this is just the need of our time. So I think, like you said, organic was a response to the big push to chemical agriculture that came after World War II. And that was what was needed to protect our food system at that time. We're at a place right now where we do not have time to destroy our soil. Like we have got to get our climate situation fixed. We've got to, and it's a big work. And I think women just step up and get what needs to get done. And I don't, it's nothing against men. I'm not like, again, I'm not making a feminist statement, but I think there's something about being a mother and that um, intuitive and inherent need to protect your children and protect life. And you just do what needs to be done. And you don't, you don't have to have it all figured out, but we are stepping up to get it done. And I think that for me, that was really the calling that, um, like you, I was sick. Um, my daughter was not doing well um, with, it turns out she had a um, gluten intolerance, but there was something that, that um, conventional medicine just didn't have an answer for. And we, you ha- we had to dig deeper and look. And I think um, for me, regenerative agriculture over time, because it was a journey, right? Our health, our health is always a journey. It's one step at a time. But for me, that's what p- brought it all together. And um, especially being involved in agriculture, I knew this was what we had to do. And I could either ignore that and go on with my comfortable life and just make, you know, just continue eating and taking pills and patching things up. Um, or I could step up and do the work that I felt called to do. And um, for myself, for my daughter, for uh, future generations and um, even though it was unknown and scary. And I think that's what I did. So for me, I, that's a really long winded answer, but regenerative agriculture was how that all came together and what I could do um, and be part of. I love that. I love that. And I mean, I applaud your passion and your desire to just jump in and be part of the solution. That's awesome. Um, and that, that really resonates with me too, that whole mama bear approach. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, what will you not do to protect your child? Right. Okay. And I think it's, um, I don't think, to me, it's not a surprise that we see women stepping up because number one, that mama bear instinct to protect your children and your instinct is telling you there's something wrong with the food, even though your conventional medical doctor or, or nutritionist even may be saying, oh, you know, it's not the food, right? Mm-hmm. How many times have you heard that? Like you're mm-hmm. crazy to think it's the food, right? But yeah. our instincts are telling us that it's the food. So we're going to step up. Um, but also moms are typically the ones that do the grocery shopping and cook the food, right? right? So we are just inherently closer to the food supply. So to me, it it isn't a surprise, but it is, um, it does fill me with hope that that, that this is catching on. And it's, it's amazing when you get a group of mama bears, what you can do, right? Right. Oh yes. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) I have great hope for this movement. So, um, how can a, just a, a consumer, male, female, child, how can a consumer help um, to fuel this regenerative agricultural movement and in turn help themselves increase their gut biodiversity? Yeah, I think um, there's, there's a couple things that, that people can do. Uh, one is we're trying to make it easier for people at the Savory Institute. And we have a program called Land to Market. And we have actually a seal that will go on products that's called Ecological Outcome Verification. So that's EOV. And what that means is that um, if a product has that seal on it, not a label, it's a seal, but it's bearing that seal, then it means that that product actually regenerated land through its production instead of depleted it. So it's looking at outcomes on the land. There is no outcomes-based system or, um, you know, product identification program out there. It's all about compliance, right? Organic is about 
compliance. We did not use this pesticide. We did not use this pet check, 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 right? Compliance. It's not saying, okay, did that actually have a positive outcome on the land? Is that actually moving the needle in terms of building soil, taking it out of the atmosphere, putting it back in, into the soil where it belongs and having a healthy carbon cycle? Um, is it, are we doing all those important things? And um, this, we, Savory Institute was not in the business of creating consumer facing products. This is not our specialty. We work with farmers and ranchers, but so many people were coming to us and saying, how can I support farmers and ranchers who are, are doing the right thing, who are, who are managing land and animals um, in the best way possible? And that, that program and our venture into this whole new space of, of um, in the consumer space is, was driven by that, by both consumers and producers saying, we need to be recognized as doing things differently and building soil through our production instead of depleting our land base um, and mining it and just causing deserts. Um, so that's coming in 2019. We'll have products on the shelf that are available. So we're in our prototype year. Um, my husband's deeply involved in the um, in the EOV program. So he actually goes around in California and sets up transects, monitoring transects using our protocol to um, scientific, in a fi scientifically robust way, measure that we are building soil through production um, and through good management, which we know for us at the Savory Institute, we know holistic management is the framework that creates these regenerative outcomes on the land. Um, so this is like I said, we didn't um, we didn't decide to go in and, and be this this um, new consumer um, label, but we are in that space because it needs to be done. That's just a part of stepping up and getting it done. So that's one way. Um, I think a, it, um, I'm always a, a fan of knowing your farmer and buying local and and having that conversation. Go to the place, see see the see how it looks, see the animals, see the plants that you're eating and consuming. Um, because I think that something that, that our industrial food system promotes is, is opaqueness and, and um, lack of knowledge. So right, I go to the store and I buy this little package of chicken or I buy this packet, this apple. I have no idea where it came from, what, what was put into it. And um, there's so much joy that can come from knowing where your food comes in. It. And, and I think it just, it, taste better. I think local fresh food and um, food that's produced in a, in a way that's regenerating soil and on a regenerating land base is going to be better for you and it tastes better. And that's your indicator that it's healthier in, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that. I'm very excited about this seal because so this is something that's going to be, um, is it going to be on processed foods and like meats, for instance? Um, so be different types of foods that are coming from um, farmers that are using regenerative agriculture. So it's going to right. be all these different types of foods. Right. It'll start. It'll start with what we consider our core competency, which is ruminants on grasslands. Right. That's where the holistic management, or, or at least to this point, has really. Um, that's where we really focus. So it, we're starting with meat, wool, dairy, and leather. So those would be the the four products because those come from animals, right? But um, we. But also we have like in California we have vineyards that we work with where they're grazing sheep in between the um and the the vines the grape vines and so they're actually um regenerating the soil so those those grapes that are in the wine come from regenerating soil so it will expand quickly to other products we just have to start with our core competency oh i love that so when the seal becomes available i'd love to have you back so we can okay. show the consumer what the seal looks like and you know get tell them yeah. where to actually go to get them that'd be awesome okay um last question if I garden at home, mm -hmm. what is one simple thing I can do to start practicing regenerative agriculture in my own home garden? Right. Okay. So I have two, two quick tips. One okay. thing is, is um, cover your soil. So there that uh, Gabe Brown, a farmer in North Dakota, he always says, um, don't farm naked. So you could not, no, don't garden naked. Don't let your soil be bare. It doesn't. Um, and then our friend, uh, at Be Love Farm, Matthew Inglehart here in California, he always says that Mother Nature is very modest, so keep her covered. She likes to stay covered, and um, so that. But it's just uh, that just covering your soil with a nice um, layer of mulch or what we call litter. Um, so laying down 
like here where I live, I live in an agricultural community. So it's not hard for me to drive down the road and get some old hay from my neighbor and just do a little cover of a light cover of, of hay over the top of it or something, dead grass, whatever it may be, just a light layer, but it uh, maintains the soil temperature and it um, helps the water sink right into the soil instead of running off and creating a hard cap over your soil. But just covering the soil, you'll just start to notice life spring up. So you'll see more earthworms. You'll see like the just a sponginess to the soil instead of like a hard dead feeling um, so one to keep your soil covered in whatever way makes sense in your environment and using your resources that are available and then two is don't use synthetics just don't don't give in to the the beautiful picture on the nitrogen you know or the, the whatever like the the little bottle of fertilizer or pesticides or whatever like um, detox or come off of like we we talk about that those kind of synthetics in agriculture being like a drug so you have to detox from that system um because it's a quick fix right so wean yourself off of synthetics and cover your soil and you'll be you'll be doing a great thing for your family and for the for the earth i love that and those are um quick easy things that any of us can do in our garden i love that and that um brings up a good point that um, through regenerative agriculture, if you do have the healthy soil, you shouldn't need to be adding fertilizers to right. your soil, right? Right, right. So it's just, uh, a, go ahead. Oh, no, I just think it's, I, just thinking of that, uh, it's, it's interesting to me, like there's a huge emphasis obviously on soil and regenerative agriculture. And so what we're seeing is these um, people who want to make that transition or who are inspired to make that transition in agriculture become these soil geeks. So my husband and I are one of them. You can just, it's just fascinating when soil comes to life, what it does. And I just, that makes gardening, gardening magical. So it's not just about the tomato that you produce and how red it is or whatever, but it's about this whole, it's just magical. So I, I just encourage you to everyone to take that step. So. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you, Abby. And yeah, and, and I just want to encourage everybody that I strongly believe that this is the way, one of the main ways that we can increase our gut diversity, um, the, the microbes of, in our gut, and um, therefore achieve better, even possibly optimal health. Again, there is a time and place for probiotics. Um, I can tell you real fast, um, my son, for instance, um, we did a fecal test on him when he was really sick. And he had um, off the charts levels of a microbe that is normally present in your gut, but it got out of check because he didn't have enough of the quote unquote good microbes in his gut. Um, and this was a microbe that um, has been correlated now with autism. Mm. And sure enough, he was having early signs of autism. Um, so we did use probiotics at the time to, you know, partly to beat down that unfavorable uh, microbe and to boost up his favorable microbe. So again, there is a time and place. I think mm -hmm. though, for me personally, I believe they should be used acutely. You know, it's not, not chronically. I think um, for a more sustainable approach for human longevity and wellness, the answer is gonna be in regenerative agriculture. So mm -hmm. I completely appreciate you, Abby, coming on and explaining regenerative agriculture to us and how this affects our health. And I applaud you for your involvement and your passion and your drive. I know it's time consuming what you do, but I'm behind you 100%. And please come back when, okay. when the table is ready um, and teach us how we can go find this. I mean, this is a seal, excuse me, it's a seal. Yes. Uh, come back and teach me how, you can find, how we can find the seal in our local grocery stores. I will do that. I will do that. Thank you so much. Think, oh, and one last thing. If someone wants to know more about regenerative agriculture or they want to connect with you, how could they do that? Where do they go? So our website is jeffersonhub.com. So that's specific to um, the hub that we have here in Northern California. And then a Savory Global. So you can go to savory.global and that's the Savory Institute's website. And for, through that website, you can find out about the Savory's work um, across the world, including our hub in California um, and, and also find a hub in your local area. If they're awesome. Thank you so much, Abby. We'll yeah. see you soon. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye.